has some room. In there for the touchdown. Coming home here in lane five. Well out in front of the field. And Lonchek touches in a time of 52.92. A new high school national record. Back to back to back to back state champions. Sports, your home for NSAA championships is live from the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. For the Class C1 state championship, it's a battle and a showdown between the Crusaders of Grand Island Central Catholic, seated number two at 33 and two, and the top seed Wahoo Warriors at 33 and two. And hello again, everyone. I'm Larry Putney, along with Kathy Wieskamp. Welcome back for our fourth state championship of the day. We've crowned three titles in D2, D1, C2, and now it's time for Class C1 to take stage. And we have a program here very similar to the one we just finished watching, who's never won a state championship right. in Wahoo and one that has won a ton <laughs> in GICC. <laughs> GICC has nine titles. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've been in the uh, final match 17 times wow. as well. So it's not like they've just been there nine times. They've been there 17 times and have come through and um, are back again. They haven't been here since 2010, however, but are back and again, a very storied um, legacy there at Grand Island Central Catholic. Wahoo, while you might know that school, they've been known for their basketball program. They'd like to change that and make their name and their mark here in the volleyball world. This is their first appearance in the finals. They've been in the tournament three times, but they're here. They've done a great job all season, only two losses, and they're ready to try and claim their first volleyball championship. Well, let's take a look. Wahoo representing District 2 in Wahoo, Nebraska. And out of District 6, Grand Island Central Catholic, of course, in Grand Island. How'd they get here? Wahoo knocked off Minden and North Bend. GICC took on Concordia, the defending state champs, by the way, and also knocked off Lincoln Lutheran 3-1 to one to get here. Go down to the floor to uh, Ryan Mix. Hey guys, well you mentioned you know, Wahoo doesn't have the storied history that GICC does. They're not the perennial power that the Crusaders are, but they're the top seed in Class C1 and they are not acting like they are the underdog here at the state tournament. And they only suffered two losses this year. That was to Omaha Duchenne and Lincoln Lutheran. And outside of those matches, the Warriors only lost three sets all season they have two outstanding players and Kyla Swanson an Illinois commit and men in transfer and Kinsley Tinglehoff a senior setter for the Warriors who has over 3,800 career assists which is a class C1 record and on the flip side GICC they only have one senior that's Ali Nowicki and they are led by junior Megan Woods a UNO commit who has 419 kills on the season should be an excellent match in class C1 between Wahoo and GICC. All right, thanks, Ryan. The Class C1 State Championship is coming up, and the guys that bring you these matches throughout the day will get a little look behind the scenes. This is the crew that will bring you the C1 State title coming up next on NET. Have you ever wondered what happens to soybeans after they're harvested? Every year, soybean farmers invest a portion of their soybean revenue to fund research, marketing, and promotion, which is called the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff. 80% of the harvested soybeans are crushed into soybean meal that's used to feed poultry and livestock. The other 20% is made into soybean oil that's used for cooking oil and biodiesel. To learn more about the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff, nebraskasoybeans.org. When you're looking for Nebraska's stars of tomorrow, start with the young Nebraskans in 4-H and FFA. That's why Constellation has contributed more than $197,000 to 4-H and FFA in the 60 Nebraska counties we serve. Constellation supplies natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. By supporting 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's stars of tomorrow as well. Natural gas supply from Constellation. The values that Methodists bring is family. It's important going through school that you're not just a number, that you're a face and that you're a name to a teacher. And so I loved the small class sizes. What it means to me is that I found my foundation where I can build on my passion and I can embrace something new in my life. 
It is a place where I know that I'm supposed to be. The Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association is pleased to sponsor the NSAA Academic All-State Award Program, recognizing students and athletes who shine in the classroom and on the field. This statewide program recognizes academic excellence, leadership, and athletic achievement in over 20 high school sports and activities. We honor these exceptional students and all of the teachers, coaches, and parents who have mentored them. Together, we can continue to make Nebraska a great place to live, learn, and play. Coverage of the 2017 NSAA High School Volleyball Championships on NET is made possible in part by Nebraska Public Power District, Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, Methodist College, Constellation, and Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. We're back at Devaney, home of the Huskers, where it will host the Class C C1 state title. And players ready for introductions. For that, let's go down to Steve Lemon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center and the 2017 Nebraska School Activities Association Volleyball Championships. Today's Class C1 championship match features the Grand Island Central Catholic Crusaders and the Wahoo Warriors. The NSAA is proud to recognize our premier corporate partners for their outstanding support of NSAA activities, U.S. Bank, Farmers Mutual Insurance, the Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association, Nebraska Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, and CHI Health St. Elizabeth. And now for the introduction of the players and coaches. Here are the Grand Island Central Catholic Crusaders. Number one, Lauren Willman. Number three, Courtney Toner. Number four, Grace Herbeck. Number seven, Maggie Kessler. Number nine, Allison Calvota. Number 13, Ellie Stanson. Number 14, Maddie Urbanski. The starters are number two, Jenna Lowry. Number five, Kate McFarland. Number six, Avery Calvota. Number 11, Katie Major. Number 12, Ali Nowicki. Number 15, Cameron Willman. And number 16, Megan Woods. The assistant coaches are Kelsey Shield, Kelsey Werner, Mackenzie Mudloff, and Brittany Riley. The head coach is Sharon Zavala. Here are the Wahoo Warriors. Number one, Tony Greenfield. Number three, Kendall Brigham. Number 14, Lauren Cavan. Number 20, Kelsey Sears. The starters are number eight, Maddie Larson. Number 10, Kinsley Tinglehoff. Number 11, Ellie Glock. Number 12, Kyla Swanson. Number 13, Ellie Larson. Number 21, Lily Mann. And number 25, Morgan Mortz. The assistant coaches are Aaron Simons and Kelsey Sestek. The head coach is Trish Larson. Today's officials are Michelle Pineda and Kelly Steele. The bench official is Craig Weedle. Our line judges are Mark Tackett and Tegan Moeller. And now, let's play volleyball! Well, here we go. The C1 State Championship on the line. Grand Island Central Catholic. The Crusaders have been here, as you said, 17 times. And 
a first ever trip for the ladies from Wahoo, the Warriors looking for that school's first ever state championship. How did Trish Larson put it? She said, you know, we've got a lot of basketball tradition in Wahoo. We're just looking to hang a banner and build our own tradition for the Warriors in volleyball. And she's got a collection of, of ladies out here on the court that have that opportunity yep. and could very likely do that. There's Sharon Zavala, the longtime head coach at GICC. She picked up win number 1,000. <laughs> That's right, yep. 1,000 this year. She is 1,006 and 196. That's just uh, outstanding. And there's Trish Larson. Trish, 257 and 65, the head coach of the Wahoo Warriors. Sister to former Husker Kelly Aspergen. Yep. So she was also a mom that was part of a state champion at right. Callaway. So she knows what it's like to be in this situation as a player. And I'm sure she lended her advice to her team. Check out the nerves, relax, and here we go. Good set behind to Ellie Glock. Glock puts it down. Ellie Glock averages about six kills per set as she now heads back to the service line. Glock certainly a familiar name in Wahoo land. Her dad, Jason Glock, won four consecutive Class B state basketball titles. Many would remember him also as a Husker, played for Nebraska basketball. There's the swing by Megan Woods. She's committed to play volleyball at UNO yep, yep, yep. for the Mavs. See the stitches? Yep, <laughs> I was just gonna say, see those little <laughs> stereo strips up there? Yep. <laughs> Means you're not afraid to get aggressive, right? Nope, that's right. Those are battle wounds. <laughs> right on the back line. Woods with the kill. I call them, uh, you know, badges of honor. <laughs> Katie Mazur now to serve. Great up by Jenna Lowry. Point for Wahoo, two hits. legitimate she had to go to the ER after their first round game on Thursday had five stitches uh, you know just went all out diving for a ball and 99 times out of 100 you're gonna be fine and in Thursday's case she really wasn't obviously she's fine now but kind of a, a minor scare I guess you could say having to go to the hospital they come off a collision in a pursuit Regardless, she's here. She's a tough cookie, <laughs> and we're glad that she's all right. There's the serve from Kayla Swanson, and that's just long back-to-back -back service errors for the Warriors and the Crusaders. So to serve now for GICC, Avery Calvota. There's a good aggressive swing, but no touch and long, and that'll be a point for the Crusaders. Good pass right on spot. They'll kick it out there again. That time, Block gets a touch. Go right back to the pin again. Rolled off the tape and a terrific up. Aggressive swing from Kate McFarland, not down, out of the back row. And long off the swing of Ellie Glock. 3-0 run here for the Crusaders. Leading 8-3.
Out of the back row, that's rolled over, not down by Ellie Larson. And the Warriors trying to knock off here some early jitters. Mm -hmm. Trish Larson up off the chair, trying to encourage the team, and now takes the timeout. She saw the same thing, just a couple of times into the net. Yep. A couple of swings into a net. Those are just the early jitters of a state championship and a team that wants so badly to bring back a banner to Wahoo in state volleyball. Let's take a look at last year's C1 title match. The Omaha Concordia Mustangs completed a sweep over the Malcolm Clippers, helping the Mustangs win their first title in Class C1. Concordia fought off the top-ranked and undefeated Clippers, winning each set by less than three points. The young Mustangs were down 22 to 13 in the third set and were able to fend off four set points, tying it at 24 all. It went back and forth until Sydney Clarkson and Avery Yakish had back-to-back -back kills, giving them the victory 37 to 35 in the final set. Two to the outside, swing, Yakish. That's the match! It's a state championship for Concordia! The first ever! May have another first ever here this afternoon. Wahoo looking for its first state championship. Two touches called on yep. the Crusaders, GICC. Back to serve now is Kinsey Tinglehoff, the senior setter. Tinglehoff pushes outside, gets a good swing off of the touch. Ellie Larson wants a touch. Nope. Didn't nope. get the touch. Oh. Called for it right away. Either well schooled at that or she hurt something. <laughs> Either way, nice work. You feel it, you want it, you hope. Second. A little swipe there by Larson. Good up, Tinglehuck. Out to Larson. Into the block. Throws the chicken wing to keep it alive. Block back. Nice rally here. Mm -hmm. On the slide, off the block and down. The kill by Cameron Wilman. Cam Wilman with the kill. Wilman doing a nice job coming around on that slide. She stays behind the ball. Good vision, hard shot down the line. Well done. Aggressive serve there by McFarland comes up short. Side. Wilman again. Wilman, Woods, Mazer in the front row for the Crusaders. Here's Glock. Not there. Swing long, no touch, point for the Warriors. Just long there. So here's Mo Mortz in to serve. Mo 5'5 five, five senior. She's headed to either Wayne State or Wesleyan next year. Great student, 3-8 GPA, good dig there. Keep it alive on a hard swing down the line. And just in on that back line kill. By Maddie Larson. Just takes it down that line. Good high hand, keeps that wrist up, or hand high, and uses the wrist to control the ball, place it in the court. Nice up, Tinglehoff. Larson 
Provides her own coverage, keeps it alive. Off the block and the kill by Woods. Woods is so tough up there. She really comes and battles, beats at that block, knocks you off. Even if you're there, she goes right here at the seam and blasts it through. Serve long. There's Sharon Savala. Here's something you may not have known about Sharon Savala. You know, she ran in the first ever girls state track meet. I read that. I thought she was that a is awesome. Class B champion in the back then it was the 880. Is it 880, 440, all that? It's like she's got a little sprint left in her. I'm thinking 880. You know, I mean, when she hit the thousand mark this year, I was so excited for her. Yeah. I mean, um, just uh, an outstanding coach, has done a great job with their program year in, year out. And so just fun. I mean, that is an incredible feat. Um, so congratulations to her on that huge benchmark. You and I were both a little surprised when we looked and said, it's been 2010 <laughs> since GICC has been at state. They, they you and I have been doing this since early 2000s, yeah, right? Yeah. For a while. <laughs> yeah, just go with for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and we, they were just such a staple down here for so many years, and we just got used to seeing yep. Sharon and her team and looked down and said, it's been since 2010. They won the title in 10, and they didn't even make state last year. Right. In 2016. In the yeah. yeah. Yep. So good for them then feels more more like home I think yeah. sure to get back here good to get back here after that little break they are the top seed number or check that they're the number one ranked team they're not the top seed they're number one seed goes to Wahoo but GICC is the number two seed, ranked number one by the Omaha World Herald. They've had a terrific year, 33 and two this year. State championships, 81, 87, 88, 92, 93, 94, 05, 07, 10. Trying to add 17 to the list. And just again, the, in the record books too for teams overall throughout the state. Yeah. Um, who have been here. Um, and their second all time with that 17 trips. Um, only second to, uh, I believe, Columbus Scotus in regards to that. Right. And um, just several records as far as number of matches they played while they've been in the tournament. So they progressed and, and those mm -hmm. type of things. So just one of those teams that, um, like you said, we know, it feels like we know them so well because we've seen them so frequently yeah. over the years. Well, they had that run where they were in, I believe, five or six consecutive state championships. So they were in it in, in let me see, it would have been 2004, was it four? 2002, 2004, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, they were in the championship match. In the match. championship match. Didn't right. win all those. They right. had eight, eight right. runner-ups as well, but. Yeah, they're wanting to make sure that. Um, <laughs> yeah. They tilt to that, that title side here as they're pushing to that. But again, just incredible, again, legacy and legend. Yeah. It was six consecutive years in the state championship match and seven of nine. Yeah, Remarkable. wow. Coming back here, pulls back to within one at 15-14. Ellie Larson got that kill. She's admired by all of her teammates. It was remarkable to read through some of the bios and what the teammates had to say about Ellie. Just most positive influence on the court. She's up at all times. It doesn't matter what the score of the game is. Yep, yep. That, that's what a leader. That's a leader. And some kids come naturally with that, and others, yeah. again, those are the things that you work to develop within them. And as we said, we need you to be a leader. 
those are the characteristics that you're looking to to possess and develop. And there she is. Larson with the kill from the left side. Averaged 10 kills per match this year. Coach's kid. And led the team. Right. Yep. Coming into the tournament with 336. Just a junior. Here's Glock right through the block. Nice strong approach there by Glock. Glocker is not quite closed and ready, and she recognizes, and it's kind of a lot of real estate out there for her to swing at. Back and forth here early on in set number one. The last time Wahoo was at state, 2014, so they've missed two consecutive years here, and all of a sudden, the one year they come back, they get Ellie Larson leading them like she did right there, right there. and they're in the state championship. Just great read of their block. Um, they obviously wasn't there. She recognizes and drives that ball home down the line. Tip of the net gets through 1917 GICC. Cam Wilman got that kill. William um, Wilman with three now, hitting right at 500. So three for six, no errors. Another great shot there. Down the line. Oh, good push and a great tip. Great push by Tinglehoff and a better tip by Maddie Larson. Great decision making we're seeing by the hitters from the, of the Warriors, reading what's in front of them, knowing what the defense is doing, and making choices accordingly. And a kill by Woods. Woods, big swing there. Here you get a chance to kind of see again, working around the block. A lot, of, a lot of court there for the defense to try and cover. Good work there by Mo Mort. Big block in the middle. Got a hand on it, did Kyla Swanson. Swanson up there working hard to get close. Look at those two going up as a team, setting the wall. Out to the pin, and once again, Woods delivers. And a timeout by the Warriors. That's their second timeout. At 21-19, GICC four away. And a two-point lead. Just two losses on the year for GICC. They came at the hands, one of them, to Columbus SCOTUS. And boy, wasn't that a battle for so many years. SCOTUS, GICC. Yep. I, I mean, I think it was, if they didn't meet in the state final, then you, you didn't feel like it was the state <laughs> like, championship. What, what? Right. Yeah. Um, two was, great programs. And again, two great coaches. Go coaches and a lot of respect for each other, yeah. too. That was right before the, the SCOTUS and GICC run lasted, lasted about 15 years from 93 through 2010, so 17 years. And then remember, Carney Catholic went on the run for a while and won yeah. four in a row. The stars. Yep. 
Woods is just on fire. She's just making great shots, decisions. She's aggressive. Just solid play by Megan Woods. Eight kills already. Hitting 467. Wow. There's Swanson with a kill. Twenty three twenty. Bump set out to the pin. I said as Larson got a good swing on it out of system. Led to the point for the Warriors. Swanson right up there at the net. Solid, strong, ready. You can see reading that and pushing that down hard as it comes to her hands. And the ace back to within one at 23 22. run and a timeout called by Sharon Zavala. And there is Maddie Larson, the senior outside hitter. Mom, who is the coach and also the mother of Ellie Larson. As you said earlier, won state championship for Callaway. And they have pulled back to within one at 23-22. Down to the final points here in set number one of this Class C-1 title game. Either Wahoo or GICC will take the one set none advantage. Bump set out, pulled back in. Tinglehoff, Larson, got it! Even up at 23, nice run here. A 4-0 run to even it at 23. And at a critical point in the match, this is when, it, when you want the run on your side happening. Tough serve, pulled wow. back in. Goes behind to Woods, who tipped, not there. Tinglehoff in the middle. Oh. Big swing at a key moment. Swanson puts it down. Kyla Swanson ripped that ball, got on top of it. Quick arm swing. Set point for Wahoo. Slowed a bit again. Woods with another kill. That is now 10 kills in set one for Megan Woods. She's hitting above 450. 474. And now the serve. Good pass. Tinglehoff leaves it. Block, chicken wing keeps it alive. Tinglehoff sends it back over. And it's out. GICC has an opportunity at set point. Wahoo had a chance. And now the Crusaders. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that oh. just go, yeah. Those are tough. Nobody tough, wants tough, that. Tough. Nobody wants that. Except for the Warriors. Well, okay. Swanson now back to serve, even at 25. You get extra points here in set one. Ooh, that got deep. Mm -hmm. Kept it alive. Free ball now, though, for the Warriors. Tinglehoff readjust out to Larson. Off the hands, kept alive. Block got a touch, then Woods opportunity, and that goes off the hands and down. And check that, that's Calvota, Allison Calvota from the left side with the kill. So another opportunity at set point. Good aggressive swing there by Calvota. Larson powers through and got the kill. Big heavy swing there by Larson. As you said, just powered it through the block. Blockers were there, we just won the battle. And the block! 27-26, Warriors! Another chance 
<laughs> Larson and Mann up there. takes set number one. It took extra points, 28-26. And Wahoo with the lead here in the C1 title game. We'll be back with set two in Lincoln. With the Aurora Cooperative, you have a trusted partner who looks well beyond the horizon. We're putting our owner's equity to work every day by anticipating what you'll need tomorrow, creating what's next for your farm. A portfolio of innovation that supports every aspect of your operation and an unwavering commitment to your success, however you measure it. My farm, my cooperative, my future. The Aurora Cooperative. For me, asking why is just getting started. It's more than an activity. It's me doing what I love. I'm not a stereotype. When I rewrite the rules, things get better. I know that all these experiences matter. These moments will help me become something more. Little things always lead to something bigger. Do it. Track it. Earn it. What you're doing now will help you get scholarships later. Find resources from Education Quest at trackyoursuccess.org. best way to learn is to live. Live to Learn at the University of South Dakota. Not just on the good days, Not just on the challenging ones. Not just during business hours. Or when relaxing. But always, for the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Warriors take set number one. 28-26 and lead this Class C1 State Championship one set to none. Thanks to outstanding swings from late Kyla Swanson who you see there. Ellie Larson had six kills. will get another chance. Walk back again. Swanson was there. Another great touch, better coverage there. Great save there. Will McFarland. Like, yeah. Just inside back line. Lillian Mann. Nice swing there. Just takes it off the edge of the block. Ward serves. Sets behind her and put down by Kim Wilman again. So Wilman with another kill. Yeah, but I believe that's four for her. She's hitting close, just under um, 300 right now. Actually, 375. Correct that. Yeah, GICC hitting 370 for the match, and yet they trail. Yeah. One zip. <laughs> Big swing there by Swanson. She's doing a great job working hard, getting off, um, being aggressive with her swing, with her approach. Swanson transferred mm -hmm. this past year from Minden to Wahoo. Ironically, they matched up in that first round also. Hello, <laughs> yeah. Hello former teammates. Yeah, hi. <laughs> She's also been a commit 
to Illinois. So that's in the Big Ten Conference. Everybody will get a chance to see her continue also in that role. Yeah, who do you uh, who do you think might have offered that scholarship and maybe seen Kyla Swanson yeah. play, who's now the head coach at Illinois? Could that be Chris Thomas? It would be Chris Thomas. <laughs> Chris and Jen Thomas. Yeah. And there you see, she transferred from Minden. She's already committed to the Illini. And Chris Thomas, the former Nebraska assistant coach from last year, has moved on to take over the head job at Illinois. And he's doing a great job this year with the Illini. Done a great job there, getting that program um, to be kind of moving up and, and really we've seen the um, elevated level already of play and yeah. obviously Nebraska is a hotbed for great um, players and Kyla Swanson is one that he said I'd like you to come and play for me and train. Got the block there but just out so Larson Swanson did a nice job of getting a hand on it but just wide point for the Crusaders. Back to serve now is Megan Woods, the junior, 5'10", outside hitter. Down the line. That's, Larson again. That's a shot. Aggressive taking that down the line. Really do, um, working. The, she's just got a gap between the pin and those hands, and she's really hitting her mark. Tough serve by Swanson with a hand on it. Good job to keep it alive. Will they get it over? I they're going to call a lift. <laughs> so 5-4 now. Well, that certainly wasn't a lift. It must have been the next one. Larson blocked. Big block in the middle and some excitement by mm -hmm. Calvota, who got a hand on that. Also, Cam Willman was there. And now twin sister Avery Calvota back to serve. Pushed wide. Wilman up solid and being tough up at the net. Really good seals reaching across. And an aggressive swing by Ellie Larson. Ellie Larson averages about 10 kills per set. So one of those players that's just workhorse for your team. Got a touch, kill by Swanson. Check that Ellie Glock from the right side with that kill. Right, great decision and to go behind blockers, weren't there in time. Great job by Glock to find the line. Just long from Kinsley Tinglehoff, that is just their third service error. GICC has doubled them up in service errors. Six for the Crusaders. Behind Larson and two, two. touches called on the set. Back to serve now is Kate McFarlane. That's a tough serve. Mm -hmm. Driving it deep. Deep right corner. Two again. <laughs> yep. Key on that is again, as a setter, getting there with your feet, yeah. getting your hands up and being strong with those hands. If you're not quite there, your hands oftentimes aren't in that strong position. Right back at it again. They found the spot they want to pick on. Wow. That's delivered. <laughs> Big swing there. 
Larson again. Look at as she comes in with that approach. Great set placement, too, for her to open that shoulder and really, again, incorporate that hip shoulder, get all that torque, and drive that down the line. Just in back line. Wilman again. Cam Wilman, I believe that's her fifth kill. And to serve now is Lauren Wilman. She's a sophomore DS. Right between the block goes Swanson. Block didn't close, left an opportunity, and Swanson found it. To Glock, it looks like. They use Glock on the right side there. Threads it through. In the middle. Wow. And that is Swanson. <laughs> That is Swanson <laughs> with an exclamation point there. She's doing a really jo nice job. She gets up and look at her turn her body and take it through. Good pass out to the pin. Aggressive by Woods and she got it. Megan Woods with another one. She's in double digit kills. 12 with that one. As you mentioned, over 420 kills on the season. Two touches. Yep. Lock now back to serve. Did not clear the net. Just, just a little bit under that ball. Tough one. Maddie Larson. Just wide. Wow. Turned that yep. looked like very effectively. And now I think we're going to get a timeout from Trish Larson, and she does take a timeout. Three-point lead by GICC here. They're on top 14-11 in set two. Coverage of the 2017 NSAA High School Volleyball Championships on NET is made possible in part by Nebraska Public Power District, Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, Methodist College, Constellation, and Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. So back at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Class C1 action here, state championship, along with Kathy Wieskamp. I'm Larry Putney. There are the hitting percentage numbers. Both teams hitting well, but GICC over wow. four, <laughs> right at 400 for the match is an impressive percentage. Just clean, aggressive swings. Seven service errors. Yeah, that's kind of the area again that's that's been in a little bit of a nemesis or trouble. Those are seven freebie points that you're giving away. Yeah. Wow, what a good swing that. line. Nice dig though, dig, too, yeah. by Mo. And then <laughs> almost a dig by McFarland off the shoulder slash head. Ed, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Great job here by Swanson. Gets up, gets right on top of that ball. Yep, right yep. off the top of the head. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> we chuckle, but uh, that could yeah, be in, that could be dangerous. Yep. Will they give her a quick look. Yep. Make sure she's all right. We saw that happen to. Um, Justine Juan Arantes yep, yep, yep. took one off the face yep, and just her. kept playing, didn't check, kept playing, and then she was out for two matches after that because of the concussion point. Yep, there. yep. Got to make sure, again, safety and care of your kids first off. Yeah, getting on top of head. Could kind of yep. <laughs> Yep, 
Larson again there, pulls it back to within one. This is going to be a common theme throughout this match. These are two, what appear to be right now, very evenly matched teams while he just made a few plays down the stretch to come from behind and win it in extras in that first set, 28-26. Well, and it's all about timing of when that little that, that occurs. I mean, that was late in the match. Um, they got a little surge there and end up closing out. But this has just been back and forth throughout. And given the quality of high school volleyball in the state of Nebraska, you're just not going to be in this <laughs> position to win a state championship unless your team and individuals within your team have committed to get better in the offseason. One of the if you think, you know, talk to Trish Larson, one of the things that the light bulb for Wahoo and their team was when they went to the Iowa State camp and they played some terrific teams across the Midwest and they were beating some outstanding teams. And it was coming out of that camp when they won the camp that they said, you know, we've got a real opportunity here to be a terrific team. Well, in the, when you go as a to a team camp again, it lets you work collectively together and gain confidence and, and do some of those things um, as you prepare to go into the season. And sometimes it's not about ability. Sometimes it's about the confidence and, and building that team chemistry, too. Yeah. Two touches called once again, and boy, they had an open look there, too, yeah. on that set. Block was late getting there. Yep. A lot of, a lot of places to go with that ball. Yeah. There's a block. Wilman again. Three-zip run here for... GICC. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. There you go. That's Wilman's celebration. That's Calvota. what it's all about. <laughs> Calvota was right there with her. Sharon Savala will talk it over with her squad as Trish Larson meets with the Warriors. Good time for you as we watch the teams meet to connect with us on Facebook or and on Twitter. You can add a comment, catch up on all of the NSAA championship photos and results. Make sure you like NET Sports and Big Red Wrap Up as well. Join in the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. So thanks for connecting with us on Facebook and Twitter. There's Kelly Aspergen. Oh, right there. To the, yeah. yeah. To the right. Right in the oh. screen. Yep. <laughs> There's Kelly right there. <laughs> Former Husker who played back in early 90s. Great shot again down the line. That time it was from Glock. Really taking advantage of that opening. Called long and out. Swing oh. by Larson, great up. Just reaction there, kept it alive. Uh, great tip back. Yeah. But we're going to have a net violation into the net. Is going to be called on the Crusaders. Here's another look. Well, oh, there's a look at the previous play, and great up. And right yeah. there on the way down, just kind of just, rushed the yeah. net. Megan Woods. Just hanging up there. Push that to the outside. So four hits, and that's another point for Wahoo. Back to within one. A good timeout taken there by Trish Larson yes. as it's even back up.
Swanson, big swing, got the kill. The block was there, but the aggressive swing, just too fierce for the block. All even at 20 in the run for Wahoo as they try to go up two to none after winning set number one, 28-26. There's the swing by Larson and put it down. And we talked about this match, Kathy being tight and close and two teams that it just seems from the eye test to be very <laughs> evenly matched. We can go to the numbers and it's more than just an eye test. Absolutely, there's been 12 ties and only four lead changes in this, in this set, um, in the match only, excuse me, collectively in this match. So the entire time it's been back and forth and just that little stretch we talked about at the end of set number one where Wahoo happened to get those lead at the right time. Both teams hitting at a terrific percentage. I know. I mean, 393 <laughs> and 300. I mean, just efficient back and forth. Oh, Both teams are doing good things um, on the attack. We're seeing good defensive play, though, too. I mean, both teams 20, 24, and digging balls, so. And a long four-zip run right here for the Warriors. They're on top now, 21-20. This is what they did late in set number one. Just all of a sudden got in a bit of a run, got hot, made some plays. They only led set one three times, right? Two of right. them were when it was at 27-26 and 28-26. <laughs> Big swing and a kill. Megan Woods just terminate there at key time. Block's not there, but just tools it off, goes at that seam. Off the block. Oh, even a 21. Big aggressive swing by Woods, but guess who's there? <laughs> Kyla Swanson again. Well, and they moved Woods inside this time. They didn't push her to the pin. The blockers didn't have to move. They were pinched in right there. And nothing getting by those two young ladies. Tip try off of the hands and down. Try is good. Great decision. I'm just changing things up a little bit. Just kind of almost rolls it down the backs, you know, as the block is on its way down. They're stretching, just trying to get their hand on it. Block back. Big kill. Back to within one. Now Wahoo looking for the side out to get to a set point here in the second. Just long, we're back to even. Back and forth, we may have extra points here again. We'd expect nothing different. <laughs> A set point here in the second. Swanson again. Kyla Swanson having two blockers up, but she's just going up. She's going high over the top. Swanson again delivers set number two for the Warriors. Swanson's 12th kill hitting over. 50 and making things happen here for Wahoo. What a set for Kyla Swanson. Stepping up big in set number two and the Warriors on top. Two sets to nine in the C1 title game. We'll be back with set three in Lincoln.
talk about public power for a second. Nebraska's electric utilities use a diverse mix of fuel resources to generate electricity. Wind, water, coal, nuclear, natural gas, solar, and methane. Just another way your electric utility shows how public power works for you. Let's talk about public power for a second. Did you know Nebraska's electric utilities pay more than $100 million to communities they serve each year? Those dollars stay local, helping to empower our hometowns. Just another way your electric utility shows how public power works for you. School's almost over. What's next? I mean, what are my choices? I want to find something I love. So I can make a life for myself. And then I can give back. So, how do I get there? Take the next step with Education Quest College Planning Services by visiting educationquest.org. The Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association is pleased to sponsor the NSAA Academic All-State Award Program, recognizing students and athletes who shine in the classroom and on the field. This statewide program recognizes academic excellence, leadership, and athletic achievement in over 20 high school sports and activities. We honor these exceptional students and all of the teachers, coaches, and parents who have mentored them. Together, we can continue to make Nebraska a great place to live, learn, and play. Participating in Nebraska high school activities has taught me about teamwork. I've learned how to lead among my peers. At my high school, I have set goals and I work hard to accomplish them. I like to run on my cross country team. It makes me feel good about myself. The Nebraska School Activities Association providing opportunities in 25 activities in our 303 high schools. NSAA activities, the other half of education. Welcome back to the Devaney Center. Class C1 state championship. Wahoo with a 2-0 lead over GICC. I'm in the heart of Wahoo country here with some very important men. Darren Larson, the husband and father of two uh, Wahoo players, and Jason Glock, the father of Ellie Glock out here. Darren, we'll start with you. What, how difficult is this for you to see your wife coach and your daughter's playing? Difficult in the sense that it's stressful but exciting in the sense that you guys are up to nothing. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's very stressful, I gotta admit. Uh, I don't think I've ever felt anything like this in my life. Um, but it is exciting. I mean, going through all this, all of our years, I mean, the numerous amount of hours we've had in club ball and, and watch my wife coach before our girls even were playing club ball. So she's been doing a lot. Yeah. Watching her play college volleyball at, at Kearney. Yep. You know, so I've been doing a lot of that for a lot of my life. And, but uh, this is the most exciting part of my life right now. And this is uncharted territory for Wahoo. You know, never made it this far. How neat is it um, for your wife and your daughters? How how excited have they been the past few days? Oh, they've been they've been ecstatic. I mean, a lot more calmer than me. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's big for the community of Wahoo. You know, this is something that they've never done in the city uh, a couple years ago we made it to state first time ever and the year after that we made our first victory and now we're back this year and, and hoping to go all the way but we got a tough competition here with GICC so hopefully we can pull it out but uh, I give credit to my wife she does a great job with those kids and the whole team and give credit to the VCN Nebraska club team they they've taught them very well growing up too in their club that's right all right deep breaths there <laughs> thank you Let's turn over to Jason. Jason, you are a four-time state champ on the basketball team at Wahoo, only lost one game. In a unique perspective for you now as a father to have to sit back and have no control over the environment. But what did you tell your daughter, Ellie, a freshman, uh, who's getting her first state tournament experience? Well, I just told her to relax, have fun, and enjoy the moment, and just play like you have all, all season, and hopefully good things will happen. Are you feeling a lot of the same emotions that Darren's feeling right now? Yes, uh, nervous, excited, happy for the girls because they work so hard and they're just fighting out here. All right, guys, we'll send it back to you. But lots of nerves down here, but also lots of happy faces right now. Great interview. Thanks, Ryan. Swing there and a kill by GICC. It, uh, I thought it was interesting when he said 
something about the emotion because you can't control anything when you're watching. It's completely different. Yep. Yep. Environment, feeling, thought process. I honestly think it's more nerve wracking sitting and watching than it is out there playing. Absolutely. I mean, when you're on the court, you you can do things. Right. You have an impact. Here you're you're just again re reacting, responding to what's going on out there with no control. Though. So you just well embrace it, enjoy it. Right. And then the service error. Big swing, back line, Jimmy Christmas. That was just inside that back line, and what a kill. What a great set by Tinglehoff, too. Ball from across the court, pushes it all the way out to the pin, giving a great opportunity for Larson to swing. Off the top of the block. Tries on second touch, great up. Good save. Nice readjustment there to get it in play by Calvota. Larson just long. We thought that was going to curl down inside the back line. Not this time, just a little bit under the ball instead of on the back and top. And, you know, great defensive play. We've seen it all day, but Lowry there pops that up, keeps it alive. Gives their team a chance and they come out on top of that rally. Good tip. Larson with another kill and Ellie Larson with 15 kills now. She's got 34 swings. I just love the decision making that we're seeing from some of these great athletes, these players and and you know blockers are keying in on them and still finding ways to be able to make positive progress, find places on the court where they can take it. Good swing by Glock, but a nice up to keep it alive. Glock will get another try. That time off the block, Kate McFarland is there. Push the other way to Larson. Larson tools the block. <laughs> Just the timing on that block when you take yep. a little off it, right? Well, and she was off the net a little bit too, so the timing needs to be adjusted for that as well. So all those little pieces make a difference. That's a shot there, great up too. Nice roll, and Maddie Larson with the kill. And a little high five from Dad. <laughs> Maddie Larson, the senior outside. One more look here. Popped up, here's that out of system. But a great look at the adjustment. You can see off the net, still finds, gets her Hand on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> why does he have yes! Why is his face buried in the towel? What is I know. <laughs> Don't cover your out. eyes. Don't cover your eyes. His face. Soak it all in. <laughs> <laughs> it's again, it's that no control. You got a little release. Well, we've had a terrific state tournament. I mean, the last one, the five-setter, that hit it out of the ballpark, right? Absolutely. I mean, what a... <laughs> and nobody really could have predicted what was going to happen. Um, it just We just had to watch and see what materialized. Off the top of the block. That's pushed deep corner. Nice job to keep it alive. Pulled across, Larson. Good up. Great decision. Great set behind her by Tinglehoff. And got a touch. 
Calvert, a good high hand shot there. Just the spark they needed. Here you get a chance to see just working off that high hand. Pushed off the hands. That's a nice tempo ball by Glock. Mm. Kind of rolled it right off the hands. You got to chuckle out of that. Yeah. the block and out and another kill for Larson. Maddie Larson here on that outside. Great job also by our team being right on that line to know as it comes off the block. That ball is out. Let it go. It's a good aggressive swing by Woods again started to get back into it. Kind of quieted here yeah. a little bit. Calvota to serve. Pass Tinglehoff right in front of her. Swanson delivered. That's a great swing. Yeah, that, that's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing more you can say. Balls up. Blockers. And just works her way around. Takes it hard to that right side at the center. As it transitioned off, going up that block. They're caught it, I think, of the hands, trying to press. Woods tries to get that to clear the net and right into it. And look out, the Warriors threatening to run away here in set number three up 13-7. They just keep getting stronger and feeding off of big, big swings, big plays. It is a 6-1. And make it a 7-1 run for Wahoo. Larson with another kill just inside that back line. Both of the Larson sisters have been terrific and a timeout called by Sharon Savala. One more look at that, and again, just great execution of that shot down the line. <laughs> you read Trish's yep. lips there. I just feel like things are going our way. <laughs> and when that <laughs> things go your way. The setter for the Warriors is Kinsley Tinglehoff and she has had an outstanding career there is mm -hmm. Kinsley 3,847 assists that is an ongoing class C1 record it was 3,847 coming into this match and it's now 3,887 so she has 40 assists here in this match and stretch that record a little bit farther as she continues. Right on spot again for Larson, who delivered another one. 38-81. We won't count every one, but I just <laughs> thought we'd let you know that. Click. <laughs> another one. Now, she's doing a fantastic job, and she's got a great cast around her here, too. You know, she's really mixing it up. I mean, very balanced attack there, too. We, Ellie Larson has 16, but Swanson 13. Um, Maddie Larson with set nine. Ellie Glock seven, so lots of choices. Right idea, execution just a bit wide, and another point for the Warriors. Now 16-7, and a 6-0 run. There's Woods in system in time, on time, and delivers. 
Swanson Tinglehoff kind of got tangled up and um, great place for Woods to take care of business. <laughs> Block didn't quite get there, did it? No, they got caught up in each other. <laughs> and what do they do? Turn around and come right back. Swanson, that's right. <laughs> Maddie Larson will now serve. Larson, what a <laughs> shot. Flat ball. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> oh, he's cracking me up. <laughs> uh, I can't tell if he's enjoying it or not. I know. <laughs> Ellie Larson this year set a record for kills in a game at Wahoo with 32 kills in a season. That's an ongoing record. As she is now over 430. First team all conference, third team all state last year. That tools the block. Swanson off the block and out. And Wahoo has opened up its largest lead of the match at 10. They are on top 19-9 here in set number three. Just six away from their first state championship. In to serve now is Jenna Lowry, the junior libero. Bump set outside. Larson will regather and does not get on top. Four touches did not clear the net. Yep. 20 to 11. Tinglehoff goes to the back to serve. That means she's got three hitters all across the front. A nice advantage there as well. Great shot there, though. Terrific shot. Touch Calibota. as well. Yep. Allison, that was. Allison and Avery, twins. Both out on the court. Left it for Larson, and she delivered again. She's just been so consistent, so steady throughout the match. They utilize her here on this right side out of serve, receive. Just a different look, another place where she's swinging and making the blockers pay attention to her. 22-12. Three away from a first ever state championship in volleyball and these wahoo parents and family are now on their feet in anticipation great Larson. To the outside single huh other side swanson yes. cross court got it just, what a shot <laughs> just catches that far sideline great shot there taking it across the body here, you get a chance to see it again. That sharp angle. Right on the line. <laughs> Net. Net violation called and point Wahoo. Championship point for the Warriors for a first ever state championship. Goes long. <laughs> and everybody's oh. Yeah. <laughs> Match point number two, championship point number two for the Warriors.
Swing, Larson. Tip back over, kept alive. Another chance. Good coverage. They'll go the other way. Glock with the tip. Point for the Crusaders. Two touches. Yep. Championship point number three. Good dig on the second touch. Kept alive. And then down by Calvota. She found the spot. Trish Larson jumps off the bench to encourage the team. Certainly not going to take a timeout nope. at 24-15, let it run, but... You got it, ladies. Yep, just giving them that finish it here. Championship point. Block. Touch. Got it. Wahoo puts its name in the record books. A first ever state championship in volleyball. What a win for the Warriors, 34 and two. They finish the season and pick up the school's first ever state title. And an outstanding performance by Ellie Larson, 18 kills, Swanson with 15. Maddie Larson added 10. They hit 357 in the final set, 311 for the match and they sweep it 25 15 in the third medal and trophies when we come back in lincoln with the aurora cooperative you have a trusted partner who looks well beyond the horizon we're putting our owner's equity to work every day by anticipating what you'll need tomorrow creating what's next for your farm a portfolio of innovation that supports every aspect of your operation and an unwavering commitment to your success, however you measure it. My farm, my cooperative, my future. The Aurora Cooperative. Constellation believes in developing the next generation of Nebraska leaders. And we've shown that support by contributing more than $197,000 to 4-H and FFA in the 60 Nebraska counties we serve. Constellation supplies natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. Through our support for 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's future as well. Natural gas supply from Constellation. The Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association is pleased to sponsor the NSAA Academic All-State Award Program, recognizing students and athletes who shine in the classroom and on the field. This statewide program recognizes academic excellence, leadership, and athletic achievement in over 20 high school sports and activities. We honor these exceptional students and all of the teachers, coaches, and parents who have mentored them. Together, we can continue to make Nebraska a great place to live, learn, and play. Coverage of the 2017 NSAA High School Volleyball Championships on NET is made possible in part by Nebraska Public Power District, Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, Methodist College, Constellation, and Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. It was a warrior kind of afternoon here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. They win it in a sweep over Grand Island Central Catholic, 25-15 in the third time now to present medals, trophies, and a special sportsmanship award for that. Let's go down to Steve Lemon. The Nebraska School Activities Association, the Nebraska Coaches Association, and the Nebraska Athletic Administrators Association are proud to support positive sportsmanship during the state championships and throughout the season. At this time, we are pleased to present the sportsmanship awards for classes D1 and C1. The trophies are graciously donated by Awards Unlimited. The sportsmanship program's official supporting partner is the Nebraska Army National Guard. Making the presentations are Chief Warrant Officer 5, Teresa Domeyer, and Sergeant First Class, Marin Stewart. 
The Class D1 Sportsmanship Award winner is Bruning Davenport Shickley High School. Congratulations, Bruning Davenport Shickley. For Class C1, the Sportsmanship Award winner is Grand Island Central Catholic High School. Congratulations, Grand Island Central Catholic High School. The Nebraska School Activities Association is honored to have medals and trophies for both of these outstanding teams. Presentations will be made by NSAA Executive Director Dr. Jim Tenneper, NSAA Board of Directors Nolan Beyer from Millard Public Schools, Dan Kieser from Sutherland, and U.S. Bank Representative Dolores Turway. Here are the awards for runner-up Grand Island Central Catholic High School. Head coach Sharon Zavala and her assistants will present the silver medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number one, Lauren Willman. Number three, Courtney Toner. Number four, Grace Herbeck. Number two, Jenna Lowry. Number five, Kate McFarland. Number six, Avery Calvota. Number seven, Maggie Kessler. Number nine, Allison Calvota. Number 11, Katie Major. Number 13, Ellie Stanson. Number 14, Maddie Urbanski. Number 15, Cameron Wilman. Number 16, Megan Woods. And the lone senior, number 12, Ali Nowicki. For these outstanding athletes and their school, here is the 2017 NSAA Class C1 State Volleyball Runner-Up Trophy. Congratulations, Grand Island Central Catholic High School. And now to the champions, Wahoo High School. <laughs> Head coach Trish Larson, we have a special award for you. Coach Larson and her assistants will present the gold medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number one, Tony Greenfield. Number three, Kendall Brigham. Number 11, Ellie Glock. Number 12, Kyla Swanson. Number 13, Ellie Larson. Number 14, Lauren Cavan. Number 20, Kelsey Sears. 
number 21, Lily Mann. And now to the seniors, number eight, Maddie Larson. Number 10, Kinsley Tinglehoff. And number 25, Morgan Mortz. Presenting the championship game ball from Farmers Mutual Insurance, Regional Director of Agencies, Tim Below. And now for these outstanding athletes in their school, here is the 2017 NSAA Class C1 State Volleyball Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Wahoo High School. It's a first ever for the Warriors of Wahoo. They win a state championship in volleyball, taking the trophy back up to Wahoo. And what an exciting time as they celebrate the first ever state championship in volleyball at Wahoo. We'll hear from them when we come back. Not just on the good days. Not just on the challenging ones. Not just during business hours. Or when relaxing. But always. For the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. I am like the weatherman. I can always predict that people are going to be interested in football, just like they are the weather. It's important to have a statewide program like Big Red Wrap Up in Nebraska because there are a lot of people out there who love the Huskers. People continue to watch Big Red Wrap Up because it's really the only show of its kind for Nebraska football. And a lot of people tell me when I make my rounds around the state that Big Red Wrap Up is really their number one show they watch each week. We're the only show that reaches border to border in the state of Nebraska. It's a tradition for a lot of Nebraska fans to spend their Tuesday evenings with us on Big Red Wrap Up. Big Red Wrap Up. Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central on NET World, and again at 10 p.m. Central on NET. So the favorite thing that I like to watch associated with PBS is watching my kids watch PBS. <laughs> my kids is pretty much the only thing. I have a, a nine-year-old who grew up on PBS, and I have two four-year-old twins who are growing up on PBS. And it's the only channel that I can turn on, let them watch, and feel comfortable that if I have to, I can leave the room because I know that they're in good hands. I can trust them to PBS. Watch NCAA Volleyball on NET Sports. Rutgers versus Nebraska, Sunday, November 12th at 2 Central on NET. The coverage of the 2017 NSAA High School Volleyball Championships on NET is made possible in part by Nebraska Public Power District, Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, Methodist College, Constellation, and Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. And welcome back to the Bob Devaney Sports Center. I'm Larry Putney, along with Kathy Wieskamp. Ryan Mix is down in the field and doing our post-game interviews. We've got some right now for you as Wahoo just won in three sets its first ever state championships. Let's go down to Ryan. Thank you, Larry. Joined with Trish Larson. Trish, what an incredible accomplishment for you guys. The first ever state championship in school history. And you do it in convincing fashion, too, in a sweep. I bet you couldn't have dreamt of something like that. No, we, I, we really couldn't have. Um, actually, we talked about, you know, we were dreaming big at the beginning of the season. And I told them they were a team who could get to the state championship and win it. And I don't know if they believed it at first, but um, eventually they did. They worked hard. And here we are. So it's pretty awesome. So what was the secret to the success for this year's team? Um, we just have a lot of depth. You know, we have great hitters. We have a great libero, great setter. Our setter distributes the ball well, and when we're passing well, we can, we can do great things. So just our depth. 
Those first two sets really could have gone either way, 28-26 yeah. and 25-23. And then the last one, you kind of cruise, 25-13. How much of a momentum boost was winning those first two sets going into that third? Yeah, that was a huge momentum boost. Um, these girls have been fighting back all year long. You know, we've been down and never give up, and we come back um, a lot. So I give credit to them. They, they're warriors. They, they don't give up. So it was great. I was visiting with your husband during the match. He was very nervous, yeah. now very excited for you. And you get to have two daughters um, share this moment with you as well. How special is that? You know, it is very special. Um, they grew up in a gym. They've been with me since they were in kindergarten, um, along with a lot of their friends like Kinsley. And, you know, a lot of them have been student managers um, all since they were fourth graders. So uh, we kind of grew up together. We're a big family. And it is. It's very special, very meaningful. Congrats, Trish. Thank you. All right, speaking of Kinsley, come on down. The setter for Wahoo, senior setter. How does it feel to be able to hold that trophy? Uh, super good. Um, it's unimaginable right now. Unbelievable that that just happened. It hasn't quite hit in yet. <laughs> and for you guys to defeat a program like GICC, a perennial power in Class C1, while on the flip side, you guys had never been in the state finals, how are you able to, you know, compose yourselves and stay focused and not let the moment get the best of you? Um, I think at first it, the environment kind of got to us, but then after we realized that we would be able to go out and go for the gold, we'd be able to finish it and just played our game. You posted some pretty ridiculous stats in your career. So I don't mess this up. Okay, you finished with 3,895 career assists, 48 for the match today. Pretty insane numbers, just shy of 4,000. I know you need to take some time to reflect, but looking back on your career, how cool is it that you get to cap this off as a champion? Um, it's pretty cool. With all the stats, I thank my passers and my hitters because without them, I wouldn't have been able to get those. So this feels really good. How are you guys going to celebrate tonight? I'm not sure, but hopefully with some food. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Congrats, Kinsley. Thank you. All right, let's bring in Kyla. Kyla Swanson finished with 15 kills, hit a remarkable 560 for the afternoon. Pretty impressive stats. You were just clicking on all cylinders out there. So was Kinsley with those sets. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of that, I mean, how valuable is that to have such a tremendous setter who's going to put you in a great position every time? Oh, it's so great. It makes my job way easier. And, you know, going off um, what I was asking Kinsley about the comparison between the programs, you guys had never been here. GICC had been here many, many times. They were not going to be phased by this environment, and you guys weren't either. But going into this, were you guys a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous going out there? Definitely. We were. We just didn't let it get the best of us. All right, so is your voice completely gone, or will it be gone by the end of the night? <laughs> it's been gone for two weeks now <laughs> since district, so I'm working on getting that back. <laughs> Lots of yelling, but deservedly so. Yes. All right, let's pass the trophy over. Congratulations. Yes. Let's bring in Ellie Larson. Ellie finished with... A match high, 18 kills, very impressive for you. And I asked your mom the question, I'll ask you too. What does it mean to be able to share this moment with your mom? It means a lot. I've been part of this team as a manager for her forever, I feel like. And a couple of years ago, they were here. I, I always dreamed of being here at State. And I didn't, never really thought of winning it, but we, we did it. We, I, we, I knew we had it this year and we could do it, so. Your volleyball career at Wahoo really has come full circle from a student manager to now one of the key players on this team. Is it kind of crazy just to think back and look through all the moments that you've been through and now be able to taste the success? It's, it's so crazy, and I'm, this is like the happiest moment of my life right now. I love it, and I love being able to share it with everyone and our whole team. Our whole team contrib contributes to everything, and. So it's been funnier. Congratulations, Ellie. Thank you. Wahoo, your class, C1 state champions for the first time in school history. Another team gets uh, to bring home the state championship. Larry, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Ryan. Let's take a look at the highlights then from this class C1 showdown between Wahoo and GICC. The Crusaders came out hot, swinging hard, took that early lead. In fact, they led most of 
that entire first set. It wasn't until late when something clicked and turned on for Wahoo. And as I mentioned to you, they kind of relaxed and kind of settled in yeah. and thought, yes, we can do this. And then they got hot and they kept going and rolled from that point on. It was a great match back and forth, but at the end of the key points, um, the Wahoo Warriors were on top. And led in, outside of blocks, every other right. meaningful statistical category. Yeah, offensively very balanced. We talked about what a key um, that was for, for the Warriors. They really had a lot of people that they incorporated. Tinglehoff organized that and orchestrated the offense as well. And probably, you know, we, sh we shouldn't go away without acknowledging and giving a, great, a huge shout out to not only Grand Island Central Catholic, but Sharon Savala, who picked up win number 1,000 this year. And in the year that she gets win number 1,000, she gets back here to state once again for, you know, the 17th yeah. time. And that program just continues to do remarkable things. She's a legendary coach and yeah. well respected in, in her field and across the state and outside of the state. She's a coach that works hard for kids, does all the things that are needed to get a team back here. And again, they haven't been here since 2010. Shock for us. She's done great things with that program. That thousand win this season. Congratulations. Very um, excited for you on that accomplishment. When was the last time we had two <laughs> first time state champions? And we've only had four matches in. We yep. still have two more to we go. Still have chances. Class B is coming up. That should be a good one as well as Scott looks to go for three in a row. And Renee Saunders, you talk about great coaches. They've got a great contingent here of fans. And this should be another terrific one coming up in Class B. Should be fun. I'm looking forward. So Scott will take on Duchenne. Duchenne Academy has never won a state champion. You right. see the theme here? Another chance? That's what we're, <laughs> there might be a theme here as we've had back-to-back -back teams win the school's first ever state championship. And by the way, Duchenne coming up will take on Scott. Scott going for three in a row. Duchenne has never won it before. This is their first ever trip into the girls state volleyball finals. Should be a good one. That's coming up. So one more time as we wrap it up in class C1 for Kathy Wieskamp. I'm Larry Putney for our entire NET Sports production crew. Thanks so much. We'll see you back here in just a moment. One final time. It was the Wahoo Warriors in C1 taking home that school's first state championship. We'll be back at the Devaney Center for the class B title in just a moment. The channel you're watching now is NET Television. The values that Methodists bring is family. It's important going through school that you're not just a number, that you're a face and that you're a name to a teacher. And so I loved the small class sizes. What it means to me is that I found my foundation where I can build on my passion and I can embrace something new in my life. It is a place where I know that I'm supposed to be.